Welcome back, casual gamers. It's time for this week's wrap up. Let's kick this gaming news story off with. The Pokemon company finally issues a statement. So it's been about a week since Power World dropped in early access, and now the Pokemon company came out with an official statement. There's been quite a buzz about how Power World's creatures are basically Pokemon lookalikes, and the folks at the Pokemon company felt the need to speak up. As we all know, Power World hit early access on January 19th and totally blew up the gaming scene. In just the first six days, they sold a whopping 8 million copies and had 2 million people playing it simultaneously on Steam. Pal World quickly climbed the charts, becoming one of the most popular Steam games ever. Players started calling it Pokemon with guns because, well, it's got these monsters called Pals that can wield weapons. Aside from collecting Pals, the whole point of the game is to unravel the mysteries of the Palpagos Islands and set up a base to craft tools and cook food, so you don't kick the bucket from hunger. Almost immediately, people started pointing out the similarities between Pal World's creatures and good old Pokemon. The Pokemon company decided to drop an official statement, saying they're looking into things and will take action against any potential monkey business with their intellectual property rights. Even though they didn't call out Pal World by name, they slyly mentioned a game release in January 2024. Not too much room for guessing there. The Pokemon company made it clear they never gave the green light for anyone to use Pokemon stuff in another game. For this, the CEO of Pocket Pair, Takuro Masobi, insisted that they played it safe and didn't step on anyone's copyright toes. But the Pokemon company's former legal officer described Pal World as rip-off nonsense. Players noticed the uncanny similarities between Pal World and Pokemon beyond just collecting and battling monsters. Some pranksters even teased a Pokemon mod for Pal World with Ash Ketchum and Pikachu, but Nintendo quickly shut it down with a DMCA takedown. Still, fans can't help but draw comparisons, questioning why Nintendo never took Pokemon in a more grown-up direction, like an open-world survival game with base building and multiplayer. After Pal World's massive success, Pocket Pair informed players of their game plan. They're gearing up for updates with PvP action between players and their pals epic raid bosses, and fresh islands to explore and pals to snag. But before dropping these goodies, Pocket Pair wants to iron out the kinks in Power World to make sure everyone's having a blast. Well, we can't say that we didn't see this one coming. What do you guys think about the Pokemon Company's statement regarding Power World, and what do you guys think about Power World in general? I know that there's some people who aren't really impressed with it, they're saying that the game will die out in like a month, have also been hearing things about how they use AI generation for the monster designs. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing, but let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Microsoft layoffs include Xbox physical retail teams. As we all know by now, Microsoft unfortunately just had a massive wave of layoffs, and one of the areas that were affected was the department responsible for getting physical Xbox games into stores. On January 25th, the news came out that Microsoft's gaming division was laying off 1,900 employees out of its 22,000 strong team. It turns out a big chunk of that number is getting the boot from the customer service department at the freshly snagged Activision Blizzard, which used to be the go-to for for decent customer service. Back in October 2023, when Microsoft officially purchased Activision Blizzard, everyone thought it was going to be rainbows and unicorns. More cash, bigger infrastructure, Xbox fans were stoked for what lay ahead. But what some people may fail to realize is that the deal cost a jaw-dropping $68.7 billion, with a B, and now it's got financial ripples hitting all the companies under the Microsoft gaming umbrella. The president of Blizzard, Mikey Barra, and chief design officer Alan Adam also left from the company. And where it is some Bethesda employees got the boot too. They didn't stop there though. The cost-cutting rampage also took a swing at the employees whose job it was getting physical Xbox games onto store shelves. Doesn't necessarily mean Microsoft's waving goodbye to physical releases, but it's not exactly a thumbs up either. Back in a September 2023 hearing where the FTC squared off with Microsoft, leaked docs sharing information that the gaming giant's planning a digital-only Xbox Series X console, set to drop around November 2025. Rumor also has it that Walmart's removing all physical copies copies of Starfield from its stores, thanks to a leaked memo saying the supplier is funding this action. Best Buy's allegedly kicking physical media, games included, to the curb too. Not exactly great news for gamers who still enjoy physical copies of games. Taking a look at things though, physical game sales are on a downward spiral. According to the Digital Entertainment and Retail Association, these UK-based trackers shared information in January revealing that almost 90% of game sales in the UK in 2022 were digital. Granted, these stats are likely educated guesses because Steam and Epic Games Store don't really reveal their sales numbers. But with all these pieces of information coming out, it's looking like the age of digital media is finally taking over. Very unfortunate news hearing about the Microsoft layoffs. I wish the best for the people who were let go and hope that you can find some new jobs soon. What are you guys' thoughts on Xbox's physical game department getting laid off, as well as this new digital era that's taking over? Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. But with some more positive news, there's a new Cyberpunk 2077 update coming next week. CD Projekt Red just 
that Cyberpunk 2077 will be getting another update next week, and they tossed in some deets about what's coming our way. Good news for fans dealing with a bunch of glitches after the last big update. Despite the rocky start, CDPR's RPG has become the poster child for a well-supported game, with over a dozen major patches in the past three years. The major update for Cyberpunk 2077, which was the 2.0 update, dropped in September 2023, shaking up the core stuff with over 200 tweaks. But you know how it goes in the software world. Big changes bring new bugs. CDPR did their best to tackle those bugs in the months that followed, but they're not done yet. A recent tweet revealed that another Cyberpunk 2077 patch is cooking and will hit the scene during the week of January 29th. They're aiming to tackle the most common issues that players keep griping about, including the messed up finisher animations from the 2.1 update. Knowing CDPR's weekend patch aversion, it's probably rolling out between January 29th and Friday, February 2nd. We got a sneak peek at what's coming in the 2024 update back in January when some sneaky folks scraped it from the Steam Web API. Back in December, CD Projekt Red hinted that they were done with Cyberpunk 2077 after the 2.1 update. But surprise, the game isn't done getting fixes. CDPR's track record shows they're not afraid to keep tweaking and fixing, just like they did with The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt long after it stopped getting new content. So if this next patch does its job, we might be looking at Cyberpunk 2077's final update for 2024. And about that sequel, CDPR is busy with The Witcher 4, so the Cyberpunk 2077 follow-up, codenamed Orion, isn't hitting our screens anytime soon. How do you guys feel about Cyberpunk 2077 possibly getting its final update ever? Also, how do you feel about Cyberpunk 2077 in general after all this time? I absolutely loved everything Phantom Liberty had to offer, and Update 2.0 really brought me back into the game. It really made me appreciate all the stuff that was there since its initial launch. Just kinda sucks that it was overshadowed by all the glitches and bugs. But yeah, I'll save my personal opinions for a personal video, but let me know what you guys are thinking about it in the comments. Alright guys, it's time for the games coming out next week. Boxes Lost Fragments As a legendary thief, your next assignment lures you into a grand and lavish mansion. There, you find a series of puzzle boxes designed for an unknown purpose. What should have been a quick in and out gradually turns into your own harrowing struggle for freedom and answers. Coming out on PC, February 1st. Grand Blue Fantasy, Relink. A grand adventure in the skies awaits. Form a party of four from a diverse roster of skyfarers and slash or shoot or hex your way to victory against treacherous foes in this action RPG. Take on quests solo or with the help of others in up to four player co-op play. Coming out on PS4, PS5, and PC February 1st. Jujutsu Kaisen Curse Clash. Master the Jujutsus of your favorite sorcerers and cursed spirits. Bring a friend and dive into the world of Jujutsu Kaisen in this action-packed two-on-two fighting game. Coming out on Xbox One, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, PC, and Switch February 2nd. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. From the creators of Batman Arkham, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a genre-defying third-person action shooter where the ultimate band of misfits must do the impossible. Kill the Justice League. Coming out on Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC, February 2nd. And finally, Persona 3 Reload. Dive into the dark hour and awaken the depths of your heart. Persona 3 Reload is a captivating reimagining of the genre-defining RPG, reborn for the modern era with cutting-edge graphics and gameplay. Coming out on Xbox One, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, and PC, February 2nd. Thanks for stopping by, guys. If you enjoyed my content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll have more videos out for you in the future. Until then, this has been your friendly casual gamer, hoping that you stay as casual as I do, and I'll see you next time.